This show is pure, unfiltered fun, and I continue to find new things to love about it every single week. One of the things that caught me this week, which I haven't talked about yet, is the little bumpers that they have at the midway point where they have these cute little animated skateboarding segments for all the different characters. They're really wholesome, they're really cute, and they just add a bit of personality on a series with more personality than meets the eye. And I was recording a podcast with my friends the other day, and my friend Ryan brought up the fact that it's kind of like WWE meets skateboarding, and I can't compare it to anything else now, because that's really what it is. You get this really interesting skateboarding adventure, but then you get all these WWE villains and people dressing up in costumes, getting these personas going, and Adam is without a doubt a WWE villain. Like, that's completely what he is, except this time, you know, he actually kind of kills people in the process by the looks of it. This show is amazing, and honestly, I'd go as far as to say it might be the show I'm enjoying reviewing and watching every single week the most in terms of making content for. It's something that has so much personality and screams originality week after week. I honestly can't say that I've ever seen a skateboarding show that has like a WWE kind of villain storyline formula, but also has this really realistic kind of skateboarding atmosphere on top of it to create such a compelling adventure. I walked into this episode thinking the match wasn't going to happen at all. I thought either he was going to be a phony or he just would say, yeah, you're not worth my time. But Lang, on the other hand, I'll definitely skate with him. But instead, the challenge was I'll skate you, but when I beat you, Lang is going to skate next to me as well. And I'm like, okay this is turning into such an adventure. You knew realistically Reki could not beat Adam if he actually was as skilled as everyone made him out to be. Granted, at first, I was actually expecting that he was kind of full of it. I thought maybe he knew a couple of tricks, but not enough to actually be an incredible skateboarder. And then as the episode gets going, you learn that he can uphill skateboard, and I'm like, my man has no chill right here. I was wondering what made him so dangerous, because even watching this episode, you knew that like yeah he had some skills and i mean there were so many close calls with Reki where he's like dangling him across the board and showing him the taste of death but it wasn't until he did his signature move which is so corny it's so cheesy in name but seeing him go uphill and just destroy an opponent i honestly thought our boy was gonna end up dead here like not literally but like pretty damn close and i wouldn't be surprised if he has a concussion or something and he's not going to be able to skate for some time this show has no chill when it wants to and it really does create this very interesting atmosphere where it feels so realistic but also so fake all at the same time you look at certain characters like this man who works at a flower shop that's like the most fake personality ever but adam seems to like really believe in this atmosphere and like during his day he's this like professional man who brings home a great family legacy, and then at night, this seemingly is his true calling, wanting to be a scumbag, hurting people for the thrill of the board. There's so much happening, and it just feels so original and fresh. That's a word that can get tossed around a lot, original, because you see, it's like, oh, it's not based on a manga, it's not based on a light novel, right? But this really does scream originality. You can't say we've seen a skateboarding WWE show until Skate. It really does feel like its own coat of paint. And with the style and how hard the production goes in, I mean, the animation speaks for itself. There's so many cool maneuvers. And I mean, when you get someone as flamboyant and flashy as someone like Adam, I mean, the animation and art style is going to go absolutely balls to the walls insane. And it completely delivered on what I wanted to see. But all throughout the episode, the OST really did build an atmosphere of casual, relaxing, we're in that restaurant there, it's just like you have this really nice groove going on to the more intensity and just high octane moments. It feels like everything is just working in such harmony that it knocks you away non-stop. I like the fact that Reki lost, and I would be surprised if Langa could beat him, if I'm being honest. Like, if this happens right after, like, I guess probably it wouldn't because I actually thought the match was going to happen right off the bat based on how he accepted the challenge, but instead he actually had time to prepare, so I wouldn't be surprised if Langa has an equal amount of time. And sure, Langa could beat him, based on what we've seen, if he does put in the effort, he has the actual drive to beat him because he saw what happened to his friend. I could see him being able to pull off something, and with him having snowboarding and him able to do things that are pretty different, and he'll probably be able to pull off the move that, you know, our boy just tried to do, fail miserably, and then of course you have Adam easily able to do it and actually almost kill people. I wouldn't be surprised that that's the match we're going to build up to, but then again, maybe it will be like, because we're only four episodes in, maybe they will have a match, he'll fail, he'll challenge him again, the stakes will be higher, the reward will be higher, but worse for something like Langa. There's a lot of possibilities, right? But they got you invested in the character story. Like, the fact that you can turn Flower Shop Man, who started off as, like, you thought was the big WWE villain, turns into a pretty nice guy who actually is helping everyone and is cheering on Nia and things like that, 
And then you end up having Adam actually be someone who's not all talk. He actually has the skills to back it, which honestly, I wasn't expecting. I really thought he was going to be all flash and no substance, but him actually being the most skilled border we've seen makes it far more compelling and less, I would say, easy to criticize. Because if this was a man who was all flash, you would be able to rip into this WWE formula so much. Why do characters care? Why do people believe this? But the fact that he's actually that dangerous and it's not all talk really goes to show that this is a force to be reckoned with and who knows what's going to happen next. I just find myself so invested in the world of skate. I love the character banter, them just talking. I love the product placement. You get a and in this episode. And for those who don't know what a and is, it's a real fast food burger chain, which I quite like, though I have had it in America. It wasn't even close to being the same as it was in Canada. Love it a lot in Canada. Not too big elsewhere, but... The fact that they got product placement reminded me of that Code Geass Pizza Hut sponsorship, which makes sense given the staff behind this show and how they correlate with actually Code Geass. But still, like, there's so much charm and it never feels like you're being distracted by the insanity. The goofy costumes, the ridiculous banter, the stakes, and it's like sometimes when you're looking at this show, you could take a step back and say, why do they care so much? But then when you put yourself in their perspective, it feels like life or death, it feels like this is the end-all be-all, and in the case for Reki, it kind of was life or death, all things considered. I mean, there was some of the most intense scenes I've seen in quite some time, like the fact that he was dangling him and literally making him kiss death on the lips and saying thank you before bringing him back up. This was pretty insane, and I like the idea of the mockery before him. This was a man who, if he was all talk, this would have been the stupidest scene ever. Him taking a smoke break, where he's just like, he's not even worried, he's mocking say i keep my cigarettes in an airtight case because i want to keep the freshness and you know you're saying okay like obviously he's probably not all talk but if he is this is gonna bite him in the ass and then you see him just do this naruto run and then go on his board and he catches up with him without much struggle the difference in skill is insane and if lango wants to be able to beat that it's gonna take a lot of work i have to say and i'm gonna be interested to see if he can do it i mean if anyone could it probably will be lango and I like how Reki didn't back away from a challenge even though he knew he was probably going to lose and there was a couple of moments where he did want to give up. The idea of getting you invested in the world of skateboarding and skate is something that it's not difficult, but to get us this invested where we're so enthralled by the insanity and the obscurity, you just can't say anything other than I can't wait for next Saturday so I can see the next adventure of this wacky, wild, and insane world. Production remains tight. The animation, the art style, and I love how each character almost has their own WWE entrance, it feels like. I mean, in the episode, you get those two bros coming in to try to challenge our boy Adam here, and, you know, Reki's not having any of it. It's just so great, so full of personality, it entertains me so much, and it really does feel like it's getting better week after week, and episode 1 and 2 were enough to keep me entertained. 3 and 4, though, is knocking it out of the park with personality and thrill rides. Let me know your thoughts and feelings and definitely those theories down below. What do you think of Reki's defeat and where do you think Langa will go? Do you think he's going to beat him or do you think he, you know, he's going to suffer a similar fate, if not worse, based on the creepiness of Adam and what he wants from Langa? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.